Blog Talk Radio. Good afternoon, friends. Welcome, one and all. It's another episode of Magic Universe with Sharona, and I'm so happy that you are joining me here today. This little radio show is all about awakening and embracing your inner personal power and self-confidence, as well as shining your light and creating magic and miracles in all areas of your life simply by using a little bit of help from your angels, your ancestors, your spirit guides, whatever you call them, as well as maybe even your own self in a past incarnation. Who knows? But most importantly, we work with the divine and loving conscious energy of the magic universe that we are each a part of. So, are you ready? Are you ready to be who you really are? Well, then you're going to want to join me. Uh, During this hour, I'm going to invite you to step into your power and awaken your true magic. So why don't you grab yourself a cup of tea and settle in, because I know that this is going to be a fun and magical hour. Okay, folks, just to tell you a little bit about myself, my name is Sharona, and I am the radio host of Magic Universe, right here on the Psychic Talk Radio Network. Now, I'm a tarot reader, I'm a teacher and a scholar, and also an angel Reiki master, and I'm also a spiritual life coach and teacher of the magical and intuitive arts. And you see, I love, love, love using such tools as tarot, astrology, numerology, and much, much more, because I use it to help me and my friends manifest the life of our dreams. What are your dreams, my listeners? Is there something that you yearn to manifest and create? I can help you with that. You see, I'm following my dreams besides this little radio show and my teaching and coaching. I'm also an artist and a designer and author. And right now, I am busy uh, working on the Boho Pixie Tarot and the author of its little companion guidebook, The Little White Dog. And it's a system that will have you interpret tarot faster than, well, you can say pixie, so that you become tarot fluent in speaking the language of tarot simply by using a little bit of numerology with the tarot and following your little white dog. So, hello, uh, deck and book publishers out there. Are you looking for a new creator? Because this is something that... I am working to manifest. And to tell you a little bit more, I am coming to you live from the Big Apple, New York City, where it started off (laughs) as a rainy day. But guess what? Just when we we started the show, (laughs) the sun came out. Okay. And also... At around 12 noon here in on the eastern coast, the moon went into Leo. So, okay, folks, when it's in Leo, it's time to roar. So we're going to be talking about stuff that we're going to roar about, and it's also a time for fun and play and perfect for putting on a show. So just a little to tell you a little bit about the show, Magic Universe is a live call-in radio show. And here, we like to talk about such topics as angels, energy healing, tarot and oracle cards, astrology, synchronicity, but most importantly about how you can raise uh, your own personal magic and embrace it. And um, you do that because we give you good, good, good high vibrations. And when you're in that state, you can create and generate and attract more love and magic into your life. I also love introducing you to great people in our tarot and metaphysical community. And today we have a really special guest. She's coming back again, uh, Lisa 
Robertson. And we're going to be talking about something uh, that's going to be really important that we need to know about in our tarot community. And it's all about why we need to say no to counterfeit decks. And, of course, after, the, after we do the interview, uh, if you're lucky, I'll be taking a few calls um, if you would like a short tarot reading. Because this is a live call-in show, so you can actually call in and talk to me. Uh, the phone number is 714-861-4628. Now, that's just to uh, listen. So if you want me to take your call, if you want to say something about the topic or you uh, also want a reading, what you're going to need to do is uh, press the number one on your phone keypad. And that will let me know that you want me to take your call. And also want to invite you, uh, we do have a chat room. So you want to go to the tarotguild.com slash uh, forward slash chat. And you'll be able to also uh, communicate with us there. And after the show, I want you to check out the tarotguild.com because they're one of the sponsors of the show and You'll meet a lot of fabulous folks, and we also do a lot of um, wonderful free workshops. So uh, you're really going to want to check that out more. And the other thing that you want to check out is this show, the radio portion of our show, is broadcast on the Psychic Talk Radio Network. And uh, that's the one and only radio with Spirit, and we also have their Psychic You. Uh, which is um, where you can check out some of the uh, courses that our hosts offer. You'll see there my Certified Angel Reiki course. And, you know, just find out more about our show and our hosts and all the wonderful things that we do. Now, when I'm not here on the airwaves, you can always uh, reach out to me at Sharona at Psychic Talk Net. And uh, we are going to get ready to get our magic on and get started uh, with our show. And today, we have a really special guest. She's been with us before because she um, offers and creates such amazing uh, things like Soul Cats Tarot, the Mermaid Tarot, the Cirque du Tarot, the Animal Tarot, uh, Pathworking the Tarot, and much, much more. And we're going to, uh, we'll talk more about that, but the first thing that we want to talk about um, is something that I know we all need to know about in our community. And that is why we all need to say no to counterfeit tarots. So, um, cards. So, um, what we want to do is, hello, Lisa. Welcome to the show. How you doing? Hi there. Hello, Sharona. Thank you for having me. <laughs> My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank you for um, being uh, the first person on the show to talk about uh, this important issue that really uh, impacts uh, the tarot community. But in case folks don't know exactly what we're talking about, what exactly are counterfeit or fake tarot decks? So a counterfeit or a fake tarot deck is where the art, the intellectual property of the deck has actually been stolen from the publisher or the deck creator or the artist um, and has been replicated and then sold on. So that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about stealing artwork, intellectual property and selling it on to consumers and consumers sometimes don't actually know that they're getting these subpar fake decks. Yeah, and that's becoming more and more common. Uh, what I'm finding is that it's not only um, the, you know, it's, it's, it affects tarot decks, also oracle decks too, and it's popping up everywhere. Um, you can find it 
on um, online internet shops, but also uh, as a warning, um, it's these cards, these counterfeit cards, are also popping up at um, metaphysical festivals and fairs, and even in uh, brick and mortar stores. And um, so, you know, buyer beware. Um, and what is sad is not only is the stealing of intellectual property, but these decks are poor quality. Uh, they, um, the energy isn't good. And what we want everyone to know is it not only rips off, you know, us as consumers of tarot decks, but it also uh, rips off um, artists, tarot artists, and the tarot publication um, industry as well. So, uh, you know, you know, this is something that is kind of, you know, we all need to know about it. And Lisa, how, how, you know, I think a lot of people aren't sure how do you recognize that you might be buying a counterfeit or fake deck? What are some of the things that you need to be aware of? Yeah, and I think one of the things that's interesting is it is getting prevalent. Like, we've always had this problem, to be perfectly honest. We've always had a problem with counterfeits or copies circulating. It, when I very first started um, with the Animal Totem Tarot, it used to be Etsy. So we had to be on the lookout at Etsy, and um, publishers would send out cease and desist orders. But now, as you said, it's everywhere. And I think one of the most disturbing things is seeing that it's actually in distribution channels for metaphysical stores because buyers at metaphysical stores often are trusting the distributors where they get it. And distributors are not the actual publishing house. So when you set up a met metaphysical store, whether it's online or in a, you know, a brick and mortar, one of the safest ways to buy your decks is to buy directly from the publishing house. And, and I think that's a little sad because I know that there are lots of small businesses that rely on distributors and places like Azure Green. Um, and if they don't know what they're looking for, then they're going to just keep uh, these thieves in, in business. So one of the best ways to know if you have a counterfeit deck is nine times out of ten it has a barcode on it where it asks you to scan for a guidebook um, and you're getting cards and not a kit. So they're not only are they trying to make money for themselves but they're also only giving you half of a product most of the time. So these are going to be in small boxes and on the box somewhere, there's going to be a QR code. And the QR code is going to say, to get the guidebook, scan. And what happens is, is the moment that you go and scan that QR code, it's not going to give you anything. And so what you're going to do, because I know and my fellow deck creators deal with this every single day of the week, is you message the deck creator and you say to them, hey, I didn't get a guidebook or I didn't get this with my deck. Well, that's because you didn't buy from a proper distribution channel and you ended up with one of these counterfeit decks. Oh, that's, that's, that really stinks. Oh, my. And so, you know, just so that people are aware of what the QR uh, code is, it's that little, that little square thing. You know, usually when you, yeah. well, all the time when you buy an official deck, what you find on there is a barcode. We're not talking about the barcode uh, where, you know, it's the, you know, it's kind of more uh, rectangular shape. Um, and then you also see with that it will have uh, the suggested uh, retail price, usually for the United States and Canada. And then you'll see the name of the publisher that will be listed. So that's like the that's like the first tip off. If you're if you if someone is um, telling you or you're seeing that you have to download a to get your guidebook, that's that's really a red flag. 
And what I think is scary is you probably don't want to, even if you act, if you have one of those decks, uh, you probably don't want to, um, to um, click on it because who knows where that is going, you know, uh, who's getting uh, your information because there is the danger of uh, phishing and computer viruses and, you know, getting your uh, information out there. So that I find that's equally bad. And um, like if you're shopping in a store, because I've actually um, seen some in reputable stores, uh, you know, one of the, in fact, one of the, I understand one of the biggest stores out there, they're actually cropping up in Walmart. Sorry, Walmart. <laughs> um, and what um, what else besides the QR code is usually a tip-off? Lisa, anything else? Well, I think that's, I've noticed. Yeah, I think that's the main tip-off. Yeah, I think that's the main tip-off, to be totally honest. Um, the quality of the artwork usually isn't as good either. Um, I didn't know Walmart. See, because I, I, I think this is where it comes down to knowing where to buy reputable decks. So when someone asks me where would they get a deck, I automatically say you need to go to Barnes & Noble if you're in the United States. You need to go to Waterstones if you're in the UK and Dimmix if you're in Australia. And if you can't do that, then buy directly through the publisher's page because you can't trust Amazon anymore either. I was on Amazon two weeks ago and I put in a search for the Mermaid Tarot and three counterfeit decks popped up way before my actual official deck with Llewellyn. Um, and that Gosh. just goes to show that they're... You can't that you know you've got to stick to the places that you know are dealing with the publishers directly, and not only is this a problem for consumers just for their product, but this is actually taking money out of artists and people like myself's pocket, like thousands of dollars. We're losing thousands of dollars every year, and you might think that that's not a lot of money, but we we barely make minimum wage to be perfectly honest. With all of the books that I, and all of the decks that I have out there, I barely make minimum wage with my publications. So we notice when we're losing two or $3,000 every royalty check, because it means that we're now dropping below minimum wage. And if there is no money for artists and creators to keep making these products, then it, you know, these products are going to dry up. It's going to become much, much harder to keep creating decks that people love. Yeah, yeah. No, it's this is really, you know, it's a serious problem uh, on so many levels. I mean, what I, you know, one of the things that we always say about tarot and what we do, it's all about energy. And this is not good energy. You know, if you're, you know, you don't want to read, uh, you know, with a, with a deck like that. I mean, the energy is, is definitely off. And I, what's kind of sad is I feel bad for all the, um, the new tarot readers out there because one, you order a deck, you, you deserve to have a good guidebook with it. I mean, I, I, you know, I love, our, one of the things that I love about when I, um, you know, I'm like a card addict, I'm always ordering tarot cards, is I love reading a good guidebook. You know, that's how you learn. That's how you, um, you know, understand the cards. And if you're a new reader, you get a crummy set of cards and there's no book with it. And that's, that, that stinks too. So it, it, um, it's really sad for people who are discovering tarot for the first time. Um, what do we need to do, uh, Lisa? Any recommendations? What would you, um, suggest that we do to, to be aware of this and, you know, kind of, put the brakes on this happening. 
To, to be honest, like, you know, for us in traditional publishing, we have our publishing houses legal team behind us. Llewellyn has a site that, you know, you can go to, a link that you can go to, and I can send it to you, Sharona, if you would like to make it available to your listeners, where you can report you can where counterfeit it. decks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, where you can yeah. report counterfeit decks. I'm pretty sure Hay House has one as well. I know most of the major publishing houses do. The problem really is for, and this is where my heart breaks, to be totally honest, is for indie debt creators because it's virtually impossible for them to physically pay a legal expert to constantly send cease and desist letters and they're having their their livelihoods, their art and everything stolen right out from underneath them. So for me, the biggest thing that your listeners and anyone who's hearing this can do is to really start buying your decks straight from the publishing houses or from somewhere like Barnes & Noble if you have one nearby or contact the deck creator themselves and ask them, do they sell copies of their decks? You know, I think we as consumers are going to have to get out of the habit of trying to find something cheap, trying to find something quick, and trying to find something easy and practice ethical purchasing practices when it comes to our decks and our books, because books are definitely right up there with the decks as well. Um, and that is really how we combat that because there's a supply and demand. This is always, you know, consumer products are, are always regulated by supply and demand. They can only create these decks. They, these decks have only become a problem because people keep buying them. They keep buying these decks. So my, my plea is to ask your listeners and anyone else who happens to hear this to start buying your decks from the publishing houses directly, if that's possible, to well-known bookstores like Barnes & Noble's, Dimmix, and Waterstones, or contact the creators themselves and ask if they are selling their products. Because if we can shrink that demand, that is going to give us the best leg up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta, um, you gotta really. Uh... You know, that's where you need to go. And there are um, some retailers that are online that um, they're not going to like me giving out their name, but I will give them out, Timu and Wish. Um, they, they re- they, they're they the main, a lot of the counterfeit decks you'll find there. But what I think is a little scary is, you know, you don't want to order from them because you don't want them to have your personal information and your credit card information. So yeah, go with go with uh, don't go with those kind of um, you know strange links. I have someone um, who has both hands raised. I know that she's also a deck creator. So. Um, before I know we're going to also talk about all the good stuff that you're up to. I just want to bring on this caller because I know that you know her too. Everyone's going to know her. So, uh, hi, caller, Sasha. Are you? <laughs> Is that are you? you talking to me? <laughs> yeah. Hi, Sharona. Hi, Lisa. How are you guys? I'm good. I said, that. you know, we got to get you on because uh, you've actually had some weird things with, where people have contacted you and said, where is my uh, guidebook? So that's yeah. definitely, yeah, that's, tell us a little bit about that and how icky that is. <laughs> well, not not only do, and first, I just want to say thank you so much for for. Um, dedicating one of your episodes to this topic. And Lisa, I've been listening to you speak so eloquently and so well to this topic. It is really a serious issue. And I think, and I'm just so grateful for the both of you talking about it today. Um, but, but what's kind of horrifying to me, other than the fact that it's, this is all plain up piracy and illegal, what we're talking about is against the law. It is against the law. It is illegal, first of all. Um, Second of all, what's been horrifying to me is things like 
I mean, multiple times a week I get emails from people asking where they can get my guidebook uh, because the QR code didn't work. Um, I have, I went to a book event at a bookstore that will be unnamed. They had me in for a signing in a class and in the table with all of my products on it, it included counterfeit darkwood tarots. And I was like, wait a minute, the darkwood tarot mini came out. That's not supposed to be out until October. And then I realized I was looking at a counterfeit deck. Um, so even brick and mortar bookstores are selling them. Also, all summer long, I've been getting um, people kindly have been um, sending me photographs of all of like the tarot and witchcraft festivals where you have, you know, multiple um, uh, sellers setting up, selling, um, selling from tables, um, just bootleg counterfeit tarot decks everywhere. They are everywhere. And, and, and something that's especially problematic for creators, be it, be it indie or big publisher creators, is that this is going to start to eat up um, foreign sales and international sales, places where I don't think there really is going to be policing, um, that I don't know how they're going to be able to get this under control. So, um, Lisa, I really appreciate what you say about, you know, um, buying from a reputable bookseller and, and, and getting in touch with the creator, making sure that what they're getting is is the right thing because especially for indie deck creators um you know who who it is their bread and butter um are, are, are we're losing income you know and it's bad mojo right it's bad mojo would you want to you know do a magic spell with a stolen magic wand do you know like uh, yeah so thank you to all of you guys for just chatting about this today i, I really appreciate it thank you sasha thank you for calling in. Thank you so much. Yes. Bye. <laughs> bye bye. Okay, well Lisa, uh let's talk about the good stuff you're doing too. I mean you are like <laughs> Sasha, you are one woman uh um metaphysical uh creator. Tell us uh what the good stuff that you are up to. The good stuff that I'm up to. <laughs> um, so much, so much. Yeah, no, Sasha definitely, you know, is definitely more prolific than I am for sure. She has to be known as a tarot goddess, right? <laughs> She's our tarot I'm, goddess, I'm but you're, really... you're one too, honey. <laughs> no, you're, I you're a know. goddess it's, too. I feel like I'm still coming up the steps of the temple. Um yeah, it's been a really busy year. Uh, we've had three decks that we have been working on finishing up this year. Uh, the Unicorn Tarot is one. The Angel Tarot is another. My art, The artwork for the Fairy Tarot has just been finished, so we're just waiting for Llewellyn to put that back onto the schedule. So it's been, you know, it's interesting. My year has been really uh, dedicated to deck creation and it's it is one of those things where you feel a little split down the middle you're really excited to get some new decks out there for your uh, followers and consumers and people who you know love your work but at the same time we're having to like also keep an eye on the pirated stuff and the and the counterfeit stuff so it is. It's kind of like your heart works in two very different ways at the moment as a creator. But I am very excited about these three decks. Um, I don't have any release dates yet, unfortunately, but I do feel like at least one of them should be out next year. I'm anxious to see your your latest creations. Um, I have a, I have some of them and your books and everything and. Hey, you're you're a goddess too. You know, you um you are creating uh such wonderful products. And uh where can uh where can people get in touch with you? Uh Lisa, you wanna give out your your website and you know, maybe tell us if you're gonna be appearing anywhere or you know, 'cause I know everyone is gonna uh wanna learn more. I'd love to be appearing somewhere. Um, however, my <laughs> publishing calendar, uh, I'm not going to be leaving my writing room anytime soon this year. Um, 
So uh, if you want to see me or see my work, then social media is definitely the best place. So I am the Lisa Robertson on Instagram and Facebook. I am on Twitter and I also am on Substack where I do blogging on writing and publishing and all the things that are happening in the industry. So that's probably the best place. Awesome. Yeah. And that's Lisa, that's spelled L-E-E-Z-A, and then Robertson. Always want to um, make that clear because I want people to find you. Yeah, thank you uh, so much for, um, you know, talking about this um, and really, really appreciate it. And thank you. Thank you. Is there anything else that you'd like to add to the discussion about counterfeit and fake decks other than they got bad energy? <laughs> anything else? I think that one of the might have left Yeah, it? I think one of the Yeah, for sure. I think one of the things that I would um just let people know is if you have inadvertently ended up with one of these decks, please don't contact the creators, contact the publishers. It's, we actually don't have as the creators, unless it's an indie deck, then you're going to contact the creator. But if you're buying one of these Llewellyn decks or Hay House decks or Rockpool or any of the other publishing companies and you happen to end up with one of these counterfeit decks, please go to the publishers, reach out to them, and they will send you a link of where to report it so that their legal department can follow it up. We, as the authors ourselves, actually don't have a lot of power over that. We just create the content. So if you do happen to come across one of my decks or one of Sasha's decks or one of Deborah Blake's decks or anyone else that works at Llewellyn, please contact Llewellyn. And as I said, I will share the reporting link with Sharona so that she can um, post it up as well. That would be awesome. And, you know, one of the things that I do want to say is, you know, if you accident, we're not going after the, if you don't, you know, if you accidentally bought a um, a counterfeit deck, we kind of went through this. I also work in the fashion industry where they had a lot of, you know, things that go on with uh, copycat handbags and copycat stuff. We're not mad at the consumer. We are mad at the, at the channels and the, the places that are allowing this, um, to you know to happen and we just want to let people know what's going on so they can be more careful consumers and uh so that we can enjoy our cards and all the wonderful things lisa thank you so very much uh we're going to be moving into uh the uh, second half of the hour where I need to let people know uh, what's going to be coming up and taking taking some calls. I think I have some people that want me uh, to do quick readings. So uh, thank you so much, Lisa. We'll be much love. Keep creating wonderful stuff. Love you, love you, love you. We'll have to have you back again when you've got something good out there. And thanks for your input on this. Thanks for sticking with me this morning, Sharina. I appreciate it. <laughs> we did it, yeah. For those of you who tried to tune in earlier, yes, we had some technical difficulties. So I do want to uh, give a shout-out to our fabulous troubleshooter, Mr. Dax Carlisle, for working his magic that we could get this call through and we could get Lisa on the line. So thank you so very much from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Okay, folks, so I need to let you know what, what's going to be coming up because uh, we're almost to the top of the hour. Yes, we had a kind of had a late start, but um, I will um, – I'm seeing everyone who has their hands raised, so I will uh, get to them whether they want to talk about uh, counterfeit cards or they just want a reading. So let me let you know though, what's going on here on the Psychic Talk Radio Network. And uh, right now, we have all of our shows are coming on the air at, um, they're always at 11 a.m. 
Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. Okay, you got it. If you want a live show, then there's uh, you can figure out when they're going to be live by you. But everything will be recorded. But, you know, what's coming up is on Friday, September the 15th, uh, we have the fabulous Catherine Hahn. And she has Compassionate Light Radio. And she does offer on-the-air guidance. And she's going to be talking about being grateful for what you are experiencing today. And then the next day, Saturday, September the 16th, um, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, uh, we're going to have a uh, Tarot Today Live, and that's going to be with hosts Mary Brown and Dax Carlisle. It's Talking Tarot, and they, you can actually, with that show, it's not only radio, it's video. So um, along with that show, they have um, a video stream. So you're going to want to check that out. And just to let you know that I will be back in two weeks, and my guest is going to be the absolutely fabulous Patrick Valenza. So he is, for those of you who don't know, he created uh, the Deviant Moon Tarot, which is just a fabulous uh, world. Um, you're just going to, his artwork is just so yummy and so much fun. And he has a new oracle coming out, which is called the Zammer Twins Oracle. So you're going to want to tune into that show. Okay, folks, so uh, let me see if I can take a few calls because thank you for hanging in there. So I'm going to just kind of start off with um, the uh, first person who called in. I was like <laughs> trying to get everything set up. I don't have your area code, but it's 111. <laughs> what is your name and where are you calling from? Hi there. Well, hi. Hi, uh, Selena. It's been a while. Uh, three years, I believe. Uh, I'm a friend of the show, Melissa Colorado. And welcome. Thank you for taking my call. Thank you. My pleasure. How you doing today? I hope you are having a, a great day wherever you are. And uh, how can we, uh, what can we do for you? What do you want to say? What do you want us to help you with? Yes, um, I have a, a question. Um, so, do you see perhaps in the near future for me um, ma marriage? Future marriage. Okay, let me just also grab uh, one of my my love decks too, and mm -hmm. I'm just going to grab off a card. Okay, well that looks good. Um, I know that you are out there looking and you need to uh, trust in your ability that you can make excellent choices and and uh, move forward. And just if you're a tarot reader, it is the uh, Two of Wands, which also has to do with partnership and taking on um, a partner and looking at the big picture. And you're not going to believe this, folks. The next card that I drew is the uh, Two of Cups, which is all about partnership. So that kind of sounds good for um, a possible uh, marriage or, hey, a good opportunity. And uh, this is what I'm getting with my romance cards is um, you um, it's kind of up to you you need to be decide what you want and that will come to you and it's this is really cool it's just possibly this person you you have known before in a past life I don't know whether you believe in reincarnation right now and um, it's looking really good it's looking really good. And then it goes, you are lovable. <laughs> so go for it. I, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting a big green light on it. I mean, you can't, you can't make this up, folks. These are the perfect cards. And uh, 
<laughs> You're not going to believe this. I dropped another card on the floor as I was putting my deck back, and I got the Knight of Cups. <laughs> so that's mm-hmm. someone who um, that's that's what it uh, with that one. That's definitely about um, love letters, marriage proposal, weddings, and past life connections. Someone who is romantic, dreamy and uh, emotional is going to be entering your life someone who's also very creative and loving (laughs) i think we need to stop there (laughs) that says it all i'm so happy that that came up for you thank you (laughs) wow you can't make this you can't make this stuff up these cards are you know these cards do amazing things. Thank you for calling in and I am going to uh, go to area code uh, 216. Uh, what is your name and where are you calling from? Hi there. Hey, how you doing? This is Desmond. I'm doing great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I recognize your voice. You, you're you the one with the sexy voice. What can I say? <laughs> um <laughs> Okay, so uh, what can I help you with? Are you oh. calling in for a reading? Yeah, I had a question. Um, yeah, at the, at my job, um, I'm friends with this uh, one. Of my, she's a lady friend of mine, but uh, this is, uh, I, I mean, over the past couple of years, I've been hearing People came up to me and told me that uh, this one guy, like he 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 kind of a funny guy, but he might I think he one of the people that smile on your face and talk behind your back. And is before I just like yeah hey, whatever. But I had walked in, and he had said my name, and I guess someone had told me I was in. I was walking in the door, and he stopped talking. It's like is he just is he jealous or or for sure with the lady, or she just because it's like uh, he says. Now, how can you hang around with somebody that looks so good and you don't want to, you know, engage with her? Like, I don't kiss and tell. I don't really know him like that, so I'm not going to tell anyway. But So you want to know what this guy is up to? Is that it? I'm, I'm, yeah, I want to make sure that we get the clearest, clearest, yeah, and I, and just, I uh, grab the right deck. Right. Okay. Yeah, is he just jealous or is just... Um, okay, let me uh, let me just kind of grab one of the people that I'm going to have on my show is Patrick Valenza with the Deviant Moon Tarot. So I'm going to grab also grab his Oracle deck. Okay, um, what I am getting is you know what's going on and you just got to you have to um, you know navigate yourself through this and what's going on and you can do that I mean you really um, you know you you know he's drawn to you because you're a leader you're a beacon of light and and you know you know he he doesn't like that, okay? But what you know, what you're going to need to do is you're going to have to turn your back on that, okay? You can't you can't buy into that energy, and you got to move on. And then I get then I'm getting besides him. Uh, you said there was a woman too. Was that correct? <laughs> Or, yeah, she's I, yeah, she's uh, my friend. Yeah. Yep, that looks good there. Okay, that looks really good there. That um, that that's an opportunity for growth and friendship, and you don't know exactly where that's going to be going. And but what you have to do, and that's why I grab Patrick's cards because you know they kind of deal with the. Uh, um, you know, kind of negative energy. What you have to do to make him go away, you can negotiate through that. you got to keep shining your own light, 
and knowing, you know, in your power. Okay. Don't you, you, you know what to do. You, you really know, um, you know, you're a divine channel, um, and a shining star and, you know, just shine your light so bright that he doesn't bother you. Oh, you get okay. what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> and I do see, and I do see that, um, that friendship with that, um, lady out there looking good, you know, for friendship or whatever, whatever might happen there, be open to that. So, but keep shining your light. Don't let that other, don't let the negativity bother you. I hope that helps. And thank you for calling in. Yeah. Thanks for the reading. Appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for calling in. Okay. I am going to go to a caller. I'm going to just, uh, my third caller. And what I see is you're calling in from area code. Oops, uh, four seven five, four seven five. Caller, what is your name, and where are you calling in from? Hi there. Oops, I got I. My bad, I didn't have the mic on. <laughs> uh, caller four seven five, area code. What is your name, and where are you calling in from? Sean Hi there. from Stanford, Connecticut. Sean, welcome back. You always have something good to say. Sean, what what can we uh, do for you right now? Well, there's, I think I told you I was on some time back, and there was a woman I was interested in, interested in get my tongue to work, um, but I haven't heard from her lately, so I wonder what's up. You haven't talked to her lately. So you've only talked to her on the Internet, is that correct? Well, no, I, I talked to her via text and also via phone, and I saw her in person a few times already, so I, I know she's out there. Okay, you saw her in person. Did you talk to her, or you just yes, saw Yes, I her? did. Actually, she's a Reiki therapist, actually. Okay, you're the Reiki art. Oh, I think, yeah, let's see what's going on there. Uh um, and I'm going to grab, okay, looking good. Hey, Iraq, looking we heard good. Lisa. Looking good. Yeah, looking, looking really good. I um, pulled some good cards on it. Yeah, and she, thing with her is she is really honest and speaks her mind, okay? So that kind of might, you know, don't, don't, you know, that's good. A truthful person is good to, she's very much in, uh, to speaking her truth, and, um, you know, she knows the consequences and the karma of it. Getting all good cards. Let me just grab my um, some cards that handle uh, romance. Okay. Um, what I'm getting is you got to stay optimistic, um, and you really have to talk to her heart-to-heart conversation. Okay. As I said, she is very honest. I mean, a lot of people, you know, can be put off with her honesty. And what I'm getting is it is, you know, this is all coming up. It's uh, divine timing for both of you. Okay. And um, (laughs) the next card I got is trust and this situation is calling for you to have faith, and then I have true love. So um, keep working on it, and Sean, call in, <laughs> and let us know what's happening with your Reiki. Art. I will. And ironically, I never heard her name. Her name happens to be Lisa, as you had the guest. <laughs> well, that Lisa spells her name L-E-E-Z-A. So right, which is Lisa? unusual to see, to see it spelled that way, because usually the only one who spelled it is uh, Lisa Givens. Yeah, yeah, Lisa Givens, I think, spells her name that way, too. Right. Uh, yeah, but no, it's it, it, it's really uh, looking good. I mean, you have to um, make the effort. As I said, like sometimes you... She's someone who is really honest, and she sets a lot of boundaries sometimes. But 
you want someone like that. So it's looking it's looking good, Sean. What can I say? Thank you very much. I appreciate that because you know you just don't want to cross that line and you know and stalk. You just got no one to lay low and not push too hard. Yeah, no, no, no. But hang in there. You know, as I said, she has boundaries. She sets boundaries around herself. But you know, keep being the honest and good person you are, and I definitely see uh, great stuff coming your way. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you for calling in, Chuck. You're welcome. Okay, I go, I'm going to take two more calls. So I'm going to go to area code 403. What is your name and where are you calling from? Okay. I, hi. <laughs> it's, it's Pam. Pamela. <laughs> hi. I'm so busy <gasps> listening. I'm not paying attention. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Well, you were going to, yeah, because I know I asked you if you wanted to call in about um, about this whole problem with uh, counterfeit and fake tarot decks. And, oh, uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Sloan, <laughs> we, us- have, we have dealt with that for, well, we set up the tarot deck uh, creators group on Facebook um, in 2011. And it's been a problem for as long as I've been around. And, I mean, I released my first deck in in 07, and it didn't take very long. You know, I'm self-published, and it didn't take very long before they started showing up out of other countries that did not. It was just, it's a nightmare. But collectively, together, I mean, that's all we can do is watch each other's backs. And and over the years, if somebody sees... um, a you know a deck for sale and they know that it's a counterfeit they please whatever you do the ultimate stupid thing to do and this is really stupid is publish the link online because there's a lot of unscrupulous people out there and they're going to follow that link and they're going to buy a deck do not publish it online you get it to the you get it to the publisher you can get it to the artist please get it to the artist because they have a closer contact with the publisher than you do and if it is a, you know, self-published deck like mine and you don't have a lot of clout that many years ago, well, don't really anyway. It doesn't matter. What you do is you find other decks on that site of people that are with a publisher like like Llewellyn or, or Rockwell or any of them now. Find that publisher and get the information to them. They've got a lot of a, a big tick, right, and they can deal with it. And you can usually get those sites pulled down, but they're going to come right back up. It's an endless battle, but... Working together, we are making a dent, and we are raising awareness, and that is the important thing is raising awareness. So you ladies did a fabulous job. I just wanted to say thank you and bless you for all of this because it really, really, it will help in the long run. If we work together, it will help. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, this is something that uh, we can we can solve and, um, you know, be be aware of what's going on out there because we want everyone. We love we love what we do as tarot readers and tarot creators, and we want that experience to be absolutely uh, perfect. You know that uh, the energy be right, and you know I feel so bad for some of these people who accidentally do get a counterfeit deck and then they don't get a book to go with it, and. Books are, you know, the book that goes with your deck, I I love reading them. You know, that's my <laughs> my favorite hobby is to get a new deck and read read the book because you know how artists' minds work and you become better readers. And, you know, you guys, you know, artists, tarot artists, you know, they put in so much hard work and um, they want they want everyone to have a good experience. So... We can get this solved. I know that. And uh, thanks for creating. <laughs> well, thank you for uh, thank you for supporting. We we do need all the support we can get. And and like Lisa said, it does seriously cut into you. I can always tell. I can always tell when there's a couple of them out there because, or one at least out there, because you look at your royalty checks or you look at what the distributor is sending you. In my case, sometimes. And and you know for a fact that uh oh it's time to go hunting and yeah you find them but yeah bugger I wish we didn't have to do that but well, we can all work together on that and definitely um, I'm gonna 
also write an article on this and put it up on uh, online, particularly on the, the Tarot Guild uh, website. Thank you, Pamela. Love you so much. Thanks, Corona. <laughs> Love you, girl. Talk soon. That's it, girlfriend. Okay. Okay, folks, I'm going to take one more call, and that is area code 917. Sounds like a New York call. <laughs> Who's Hi. there? Who's calling in on 917? Hi. Hi. Thanks for taking my call. And my name is Ben. My pleasure. And nice to I'm meet just, you. Just, nice to meet you, too. I'm just wondering if there's anything you could pick up on job search. I am um, feverishly looking for uh, another job. Okay. In the same field that you do, or are you thinking about changing fields? Just curious. Same, the, same uh, field. Same field. Okay. Mm, you've been, yeah, this, is, this has been a time of, of you know, not too good, you know, uh, disappointment and everything. Um, but I'm getting that um, you're getting, that's why I said, are you thinking about um, slightly changing fields? Because I'm getting clarity um, that something is coming up for you that would be really good, and but it kind of involves a new thinking, a new idea that you will implement. That's why I said, are you going to change uh, feels because that's what I'm getting that you're going to get some clarity on a new idea and that's going to draw it all to you uh, let me just pull some more cards yes yeah, it's, it's been kind of you know a lot of icky stuff going on but this new idea that you can incorporate into what you're searching for is going to be really rewarding for you you know it's going to be a triumph and you're going to get a lot of recognition. So I'm getting, you know, to that you should um, really like, like, um, you know, right now, you know, we're in Mercury retrograde, okay? But uh, things are going to, you know, after the 15th, it's going to be good to uh, focus on what you want. Actually, this period you're having in a way is a blessing in disguise and um, don't you know there's a reason uh, why you're going through this because you are being drawn to something that is greater and bigger for you I'm getting uh, that you should reach with stars I mean you should apply for jobs that maybe uh, you would never think of uh, applying for that you don't think that you're ready for uh, you're ready to, you know, step into doing something that's really big and uh, reach for the stars. You have, you know, you have so much uh, experience and potential that, um, you know, that you you can, you know, really move forward. And what's happening is really divine timing. But um, I do see, you know, focus on what you want, reach for the stars, Apply for maybe, you know, ask for a job that has like a bigger salary than you ever had before. You can do it. Don't sell yourself uh, too cheaply. Think big. Does that make sense to you? Because that's what's coming well, through. Yeah, somewhat. <laughs> I, I did apply outside of my realm. And um, unfortunately, this is a employer's market. So mm -hmm. their companies are only really sticking to what's exactly in the pigeonhole. Um, so it didn't really get me that far. But I did, I did, you know, I do continue to apply to things that are outside my industry, um, hoping that someone can see transferable experience. But it's not go. It's like I said, it's. It's not going. Um, but I've got a couple of things that are in my industry that are in the works, but I'm just, um, you know, not sure if, if anything's going to really come through. 
Right, because I'm getting stretch yourself. It's time to move past your comfort zone. So, you know, if there's a job, you know, look at what exactly they're looking for. And even if it's not something that you've done before or you have, have a lot of experience, become that person. You know, sometimes you have to, um, you know, just really reach and not be afraid to, you know, take on those big things and uh, be that person, you know. You know, uh, I've been, I've been, that's what I'm that. getting. I, yeah, I've been applying to a lot of stuff that even, I don't even think if I'm going to get picked for, I still apply. So I am, I am doing and I'm putting my neck out there with those jobs because they come back with a lot of questions and, you know, with a lot of challenges because like I said, you get, you really get pigeonholed in this employer's market. But if you're picking up on something that, uh, is going to still be better for me on the outside, then yeah, that's, mm-hmm. well, that's fine. Okay, no problem. Yeah. I'm so getting fine. The other you. part I'm getting for you is financial freedom. And, you know, that's what you want. You know, you want you want to be, I mean, because it looks like you've, you've, you've got the goods. You just have to step out of your comfort zone, you know, and, you know, be that person that they're looking for. And I know you can do it. <laughs> well, I have been. I just, I, yeah, but thank you. Okay, great. Thanks. Have a great day. Take care. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Oh, my. I love your energy. Love you. Okay. Well, friends, it looks like we're running out of time. So I just want to let you know that I'll be back on Sunday, September the 24th. And that's when my special guest will be the awesome Patrick Valenza. He's the creator of the Deviant Moon Tarot. He has created a whole universe (laughs) um, around his cards. And they're really good cards uh, for this moment of time that we're in. They have a little bit of that quirky energy that we're all moving through. So you're going to want to listen to him and how he came about developing these cards. So tune in on September 24th. And in case you don't know, this I'm your magic mama. I'm Sharona Rapsick. And I want to leave you with a little bit of magic because I like working magic. Um, I want to leave you with um, there's a couple of magic words that you need to do every day. One of them is say I am and put after it who you really are and what you want to be because we become what we say we are. So look in the mirror and say, I am awesome, and whatever goes with that. And the other word, two words that you want to remember that are magic words are thank you, because a grateful heart is a magnet for miracles. So um, speaking of thank you, I want to thank um, our special guest that we had today, Lisa Robertson. And we had to call in special guests. Oh, my goodness. We had the fabulous Sasha Graham. She called in. And we had Pamela Steele. There are there are superstars, let me tell you, in our community. They, are, they create some wonderful decks, and they all have such magical energy. So, and then also, I want to thank each one of you who called in today and listened in to me. Uh, in my magical community, okay? And I do want to let you know that if no one told you today that you are loved, yes, you are loved and you are enough exactly the way that you are, okay? This world wouldn't be complete without every one of you. You're absolutely perfect and you are absolutely essential to everything that is. So keep shining your light. And um, remember, the universe has your back, and I always invite you to step into your power and awaken your true magic. So until we meet again, which will be on September 24th, same time, same uh, station, um, thank you, my dear friends. I love you all. If you're still listening, Lisa Robinson, I love you. I love you. 
uh, Sasha Graham, uh, Pamela Steele. Thank you all. You know, thank you. So bye, everyone, and I'll see you in two weeks. <laughs>